2001, 2002, 2003. Well, we're back to Mark Twain. Actions speak louder than words, but not as often. Whenever you find yourself on the side of a majority, it's time to pause and reflect. Who is the majority? The best way to cheer yourself up is to cheer somebody else up. Well, I was very saddened. I watched the uh, discussion with uh, Comey, I think it's Sarah, I can't think of the right name for her. Ms. Barrett, let's put that, the Supreme Court Justice nominee of Donald Trump. Sandra Coney Barrett, I think it is called. I probably have her name wrong, unforgivable, but nonetheless, a long bunch of questions, 30 minutes per senator asking questions uh, about her and her philosophy and her understanding of what the Supreme Court justice does. It's all about telling people what they want to hear and sounding like you care. She has a big family. And um, family uh, were all there yesterday, but today several of them left. The black kid from ha ha adopted from Haiti and the, and the sister, they all left. The conversation around racism and things like that got very uncomfortable and, and the boy was very uncomfortable. But what happened and why is it going and why is there a rush to get her into the Supreme Court position? It has to do with the election, or it has to do with the uh, getting rid of uh, the Obamacare or Affordable Care Act, because then November 10th is the presentation before the Supreme Court that she would be sitting on shortly uh, to decide about getting rid of it. And, uh, and also Roe v. Wade. No, yeah, Ro no, Roe v. Wade, no, not Roe v. Roe, yeah, Roe v. Wade, Roe versus Wade. And that has to do with getting, uh, taking away the right of women to have abortions, blocking all the efforts in that regard. Also about the election itself. And that is probably the more interesting part. It came up today, the senator from, from Hawaii, Hirono, she brought up the point that in the, in the Gore v. Bush election in 2000, when the Supreme Court ended up deciding that election, and it was Scalia who made the decision five to four, that all the votes really didn't matter. He decided that Bush deserved the election and called the end of the recount. And what happened there was uh, election night, the, all the media, every bit of it, including Fox News, said Gore had won the election and Bush had lost. No sooner had they done that, and Jeb Bush, the governor of Florida, stood up and said on media, that is wrong. That is not true. We're going to demand a recount. And proceeded to send state troopers and Jim Baker with a flock of young Republicans to act as an invasion into Miami-Dade and to the county office, counting offices where they were counting the ballots to block the counting, to stop it in place. This is like 10 or 11 o'clock at night on the election eve. Well, they succeeded in stopping it and demanding a recount before there was a knowledge of what the count was, even on election night. A difference of 500 votes <clears throat> with Gore being the winner. Albert Gore, the, the vice president of under Bill Clinton and George or G. Wiz Bush Jr. Well, that's all about an election that is thrown into the media and into the courts and, and the popular vote, the electoral vote, none of that mattered, not a bit of it. So what are we in now? We've got Ms. Barrett being pushed to the, be on the Supreme Court. Why? Because there's four votes that are considered liberal and four votes that are considered conservative. And she's considered a conservative. All her writings, all of, she's Catholic, along with Alito, along with Thomas, and along with, so, along with Sotomayor. All these people are Catholic. And she would add one more to the mix. And she's a very conservative Catholic from a thing called Praise the Lord, 
And um, she believes in this sort of thing. She's written about abortions and all of that. She's taken the conservative position. But she seems quite reasonable in the discussions and all the questioning. Well, however reasonable the fear is that she'll take women's rights away. The other fear is she'll take part in the stopping of elections. And she was asked by Hirono of Hawaii, would she do that? And she would not say she would not do that. She would not recuse herself. So President Bush figures if you can win the election one way, you can win it another. And that is not the popular vote, not the electoral vote, the Supreme Court, their, their vote. And that is the future possibility. What's interesting about the invasion into the, into the uh, counting thing in Miami-Dade, three young people were there at that time. This is in 2000. One of them was John Roberts, the Supreme Court justice head guy, the chief of the Supreme Court, Kavanaugh, the newly elected Supreme Court other guy, and Susie Co Sandra Comey, I never get her name right, Sandy, Sandy Coney Barrett, was also part of that group of young people blocking the vote back in 2000. And here we are 20 years later, she's now a professor from the University of Notre Dame, she took part in the lawn and the lawn ceremony at the White House when when Trump and everybody got exposed to his virus. Somehow she missed and didn't get it. But the president of uh, Notre Dame, he got it. And I think 13 or 14 other people got the boy, the virus from from Trump himself. But nonetheless, that's an aside. This rush to get her in is hoping that the Supreme Court will finalize the vote for the election. And, and that way, Trump and the Republican Party won't have to worry about the popular vote taking them out. The fear of, of losing to the general population is the biggest fear of all. So, again, uh, if you're on the side of the majority, it doesn't mean you're going to win. It's time to pause and reflect. So the people who are for Biden, and this is a, this is Mark Twain's quote that I just repeated again. Uh, it's all about is the majority going to matter? Maybe, maybe not at all. If you want Trump to win, and you don't care about how he does it, you might get your way. And if you care about the country as much as you care about Trump winning, and you don't care very much about the way he does it and what makes a democracy a legitimate democracy you don't care about those things if you'd rather have your guy win no matter what you're going to say well i'm no different than anybody else and he's done just fine and that question never really gets answered does it not by a popular vote not by an electoral vote but not not by the people whatsoever when you're all said and done future elections what are they going to be about Nobody's going to trust them. Nobody will care about future elections. And who will honor this country in the, in the world when we know they know this sort of thing can go on? And the answer is nobody. Going to the post office now, as was mentioned by my production chief, Alex. Lovejoy. I think that's the guy that Attorney General, I think that's the name. Alex, here in the background, can you correct me on the name? On, on the Joy, L Love Joy, is it? Yeah, it's a, it's a, he has a funny name. Mm -hmm. How do you spell it, Alex? Uh, is Louis the Joy? Oh, the Joy. Yeah, the Joy to the world. <laughs> the, the Joy to the world, and the. And what's that really about, Alex? It's um, getting your mail on time, getting your mail-in ballot on time, all of these things. And uh, the truth is, um, my wife has sent a package off a hmm, week and a half, a uh, month and a half ago to Virginia. She's had to trace it down, lost, lost. 
uh, mail is not going to be trustworthy, especially in this election period. And the vote by mail thing is going to be up in the air as well. So all kinds of things happening. The, the state of Texas has got uh, has made a ruling, an important court rule for it, that says that the um, mail drops in these uh, or the voter drops the, where you drop your, your ballot uh, are limited to one per county. There's one county that's got 170 people in it, and that's a pretty small county. And then one that's Houston's located has got almost four million people in it and has one mail drop. One where you can drop off your mail, your, your ballot. So this ball game is played very rough. And in Texas and in Georgia, where the hour hours, I think some of the people were waiting 10 hours to get to be able to, to vote in the early voting. All these things are taking forever. And the difficulty and the interruption of the process is just so shot through. And at the same time, we're watching somebody who also wants to make sure the ballot doesn't go against the president. It doesn't matter what the people want. It only matters what the Republican Party wants. Nonetheless, um, <clears throat> the best way to cheer yourself up is to cheer somebody else up. So if I haven't cheered you up, uh, made, made you laugh out loud, then I guess I, I haven't done very, very well. But actions speak louder than words, but not as often. Remember that too. We are coming to the end of this little conversation. And um, this uh, Comey Barrett uh, discussion for Supreme Court justice and her confirmation and the ballot that will come forward on that, the vote, is going to take probably till the end of next week. And this is going to go on and on. And uh, it's going to be uncertainty. And the public generally has got to be disappointed. But um, there's hope. There's hope that the that good will good will out. And um, when all is said and done, perhaps the Donald will do, do the noble thing that nobody says he will do. And that is simply tell. Uh, oh, I know where we, I I'm almost forgot. Nancy Pelosi is coming. She made an interesting speech. This is an aside. And this gives you another slant on what I, what I, I sometimes forget to do this in these shows, short as they are. But she made a statement last Saturday that the 15th, I think it's the 15th Amendment, which is Section 4, the president can be taken out of office because he's incompetent or ill or whatever and set aside Section 4. Now, I talked about this before, but she brought it up as part of a morning speech last Saturday. And I took that as a signal to the Republican Party. If you want him to be gone, we can help you make him gone. If you want Pence to be the president and him to be the act and Prince Pence to be the acting president, people can still vote for Trump and the acting president will be Pence. And that's what she signaled on Saturday. And I think if things aren't going to go better for Trump in terms of the polls, McConnell and um, Pence and those people that can do it will temp simply tell um, Trump, you're, you're retired. Pence is the acting president. You don't have to walk away. You don't have to resign. Pence will be the acting president under the 15th Amendment, Section 4. That can happen. Will that make you happy if you're a Trumper? Will that make you happy if you're for Biden? Well, I don't know. Uh, that would be a scenario entirely possible. A number of scenarios are possible, and I told you what they are. 25 states, states could decide this election. The Supreme Court can decide this election. And the 15th Amendment can decide this election. Thank you very much. Uh, you know. Life is funny. Ideas pop up, and I did almost forget to talk about that. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Tune us in. Give us your interest and your subscriptions and uh, anything you find fault with. I want to hear that, too, whether you agree or you disagree. See you on the edge. Don't hang too tight.
hang by your thumbs, but don't hang too tight. Thank you.